What's up, guys? All right, I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to join, and then we will start. I know it's kind of like a midday thing, and people on the uh, West Coast are just opening up, and not opening up, waking up, but it's all good. Mm, that's good. And that's good. All right, we're going to wait five minutes, then we'll get started here. Maybe a little less. We'll see. We'll see. Just making sure all my stuff is correct here. That's better. Oh, almost forget. Better audio. Uh, that's awesome, Red Corn. How's the electrical work going? Nothing too crazy. Let's make sure these bad boys are gone. Okay, cool, cool. What's up, guys? Thank you for joining. We're gonna wait a couple more minutes before we go on my uh, my dad rant about this stuff. Hey, Marcos. How's everybody doing on this uh, joyous Monday? First Monday of 2022. You guys hear me okay? Just making sure the mic's mic'd up here. That's awesome. That's a lot of outlets. Holy crap. How's this heater going? It does. I want that little noise in the background. All right, a couple more minutes and we'll get going here. I'll make sure I got everything I need here too. Thank you, Napster Ninja, for uh, verifying for me. I appreciate that. If nobody answered, I was just going to wing it. <laughs> hey, Matt Harvey. What is up? All right, let's wait one more minute. And then we'll get going here. I like to be on time, but at the same time, I know with all these uh, lives, sometimes people get alerts a little late. So we'll just give it a couple more minutes here. Actually, one more minute. Already ready, ready. Thanks, Matt. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Can I read the lighting right, though? Because the cameras are always so touchy with the uh, MacBooks here. So it's kind of weird, but we'll deal with it. That's a great deal, the 940M4. Wow, 144. I feel like they always like overstock all their exclusives so badly that they actually have to do these sales once in a while just to get these knives out of there because I know Benchmade's probably trying to crank out more for them, but then at the same time, Blade HQ pipe worth way too much. <clears throat> all right, well, let's get started. Happy Monday to all you tactical moms and dads out there and non-parents. Today is the first Monday of 2022. I almost said 2021. And I just wanted to do a live video because I ended the year 2021 with a live and might as well just start the brand new year with a live as well. Today's topic is kind of a dad advice, dad talk on what I personally carry in my EDC rotation the reasons behind why I carry the items I do and the reasons why I chose those particular items to be in my easy setup. So of course, we're going to start out, if you guys know me, is the OTFs, of course. 
The reason I chose this is if you guys haven't seen my OTF rant video, um, I will kind of quickly fill you in on why I carry these. When you have a ch child or multiple children, like today at the grocery store, I had my newborn in his stroller. My wife was with my toddler running around doing their stuff. Sometimes you, one hand is always on a child or a bag or something. So the other hand is free with folding knives. Um, you know, a flipper to me is probably the most efficient and reliable of a single hand opening. Um, I know this, there's guys out there that might think a uh, thumb stud's better or a spuddy hole. It's whatever that fits your criteria. For me, like a spuddy hole, the only knife that I can spidey flick is Dylan Mallory's Ferris or Forest, just like that. A, a spider co or um, a Benchmade Griptilian that has a spidey hole, I can't flick them. It's, it's just probably because of the mechanisms that are locking it, the detent, and, you know, so forth. With Dylan's, it's ceramic ball bearings. So those, very smooth, very reliable all the time. Oops, I just got my, my nail there. Closing that. <laughs> That's another thing, closing. It, it, your brain activates one button, and then it's done instead of having to, okay, we're going to close this. Watch your fingers. Watch your other fingers. Boom. All right, now you're done. This is... That's another reason behind that. And my go-to before was the Ultratech, made by Microtech, of course, if you don't know. This has a dual purpose. There is a glass breaker on the back there. If you're in the car and you need to just pop your windshield, uh, windshield or window, go for the window. Windshield's a little bit hard to break. Your window, that's there for you. When it comes to other OTFs, nobody really thinks about a uh, glass breaker. However, you know, you can utilize that point there. It's still pretty hard and pointy. Um, on the Guardian Tactical, it's kind of a, there's a hole there, but you can kind of use that as a glass breaker, but it's not going to do much damage. So those are my three go-tos for OTFs, and that's the first knife I carry. I usually carry two to four knives, depending on the situation, the event, the day, the time, what you know, whatever. So we'll put the OTFs. Uh, before we move on to the next section, just let me say hi to a few folks here. Oh, Cammy, yep. Thank you for agreeing. The Shredder Knife Reviews, what's up? Uh, and what's up, everybody else? Think about Boker Plus USB OTF. So the Boker Plus USB OTF, it is worth it. Um, sometimes you get it from fifty dollars to sixty bucks, depending on where you got where you get it from. Um, I know Blade Ops sometimes has sales on them. Blade HQ might have some places too. Hey, Christine, I just saw you in the bottom. Um, they are very good. My wife carries one because she has a fanny pack. So she used to be a girl that that carried like those big tote bags. So she has like water bottles, half the refrigerator, half of her makeup bag and stuff in there. Now it's just like a fanny pack because with kids, it's she just pops the fanny pack on it, has everything she needs in that. So she needs smaller knives. So I got her the Boker USB OTF, and that thing hasn't failed yet. I know there's guys out there and gals that have issues with the button. Um, there is like overplay with the blade. Sometimes it doesn't even activate. Hers works like a charm. She uses it every day. I see like she was at a uh, bridal shower and nobody had a knife and she whips out her little usb otf and everybody's like whoa <laughs> and she's like yeah the husband is the tactical every dad so that's why she knows all about knives now it's because of me before she never used to carry one but now that she knows all this stuff that's going on she like is obsessed with knives all right so after the otfs that is my everyday go-to this is always in my pocket or this one the ultra tech or the axial shift is always in my pocket I don't know if I can get up. I'm kind of in a cramped space here. So the jeans that oh yep, you can't see it. So the jeans that I wear are the Vertex um Defender jeans, and they have multiple pockets. So if you guys think I'm crazy for carrying some of the stuff that I carry, it actually is not that bad. When you see me walking around, you can't even tell I'm carrying that much stuff because my I have the normal front two pockets, fifth pocket, and then back two. But then the Vertex ones, you have the additional two 
um, magazine holders for like, you know, AR magazine and stuff can fit in there. That's how big that pocket is. Um, well, let me, before that, my wife keeps telling me to stop before I keep going, cut myself off and read the comments. <laughs> I do need a moderator. So Napster Ninja, I was hesitant as first to, I was at the Rivers Edge Cutlery Knife Meetup in August in Ohio, um, Hillard, Ohio. And one of the guys was walking around with this and he just got it in. The company is, isn't is brand new. They were around for a while. Their new branding is brand new. And we'll just stick with that. I don't like to go to the past of companies. It's USA made in Utah. Everything, internals and everything like that. I thought this was going to be iffy. Um, I reached out to the CEO and he actually kind of got back to me. He sent this one out to me. Thank you very much. And I've been carrying this since. So it's probably about Halloween. I've been carrying this since Halloween. I like it better than the OTF, um, the Microtech OTFs, because watch this. I don't know if you, I, I can't really show how it feels, but if you can see that my thumb is taking a little bit of extra strength to activate that. It's less. It's not as easy as the Guardian Tactical. Like, you can, like, flick it. Just, oh, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but it's easier to actuate than the Ultratech, but not as e easy as the Guardian. But I don't want it as easy as the Guardian because sometimes... See? I got it to come out. Wow, this one is not... I might have to send this one back in. What the hell is going on with that one? But yes, this one is not as easy. And with kids and phones and stuff, it's it's better to have something that's not easy enough for them to open, but at the same time, quick enough for you to open. Oh, the comments just went crazy. Who's all here? Who's all here? Oh, JB, what's up? I didn't see you sneak in there, sir. Nice, fast. How you doing? All right, so let's move on to the next item that I carry. I keep going back to OTFs, my all-time favorites, folding knives. I don't always carry a folding knife on me. Well, I take the back. I don't always carry a full-size folding knife on me. Sometimes I carry a fifth pocket folding knife, but we'll get to those in a moment. The knife that got me into this craze for flipping knives is Mr. Kit Carson's M16s. May you rest in peace, sir. You're Designs are amazing. Everybody knows I also love love the M16s and M21s. M21s are more of a clip point recurve. And then this is just your kind of Americanized Tonto, but I call it the clip point Tonto because it comes down. Eastern tonsils are straight back. Folding knives, I usually carry a clip point or a drop point because those are very, very utilizable and versatile blade shapes. Clip points, you can kind of do rock cuts, food prep. The shape is still creates a strong point, not as strong as a straight back. However, it still gives you a nice curvature, a nice slicing, cutting, puncturing, all around blade. Yes, I love um, Tontos, but as you see, you can't really rock cut with that, but luckily with Mr. Kit Carson's design, there's a slight belly, just like on my Grizzlar fixed blade to the Tonto. Most Tontos, like this Kaiserlin, is a straight blade, so it's like a freaking razor compared to a slight belly here. And then, of course, your nice curved drop point blade for cutting. The ones I kind of carry a lot of lately because of also like how I've been designing my knives is kind of like a Leon Ma Lenny V2. As you see, yes, it is a Tonto. His is a clip point Tonto. However, it does have that curvature just like a clip point does. So you can still kind of get the rock cuts about the first one third to half of the blade and then the rest of the blade still has that kind of nice straight blade for Tontos. And as you can see, the sizes do vary on what I carry. 
like I said, it's the situations I'm in. You're not going to want to go to the grocery store and then you have to open your toy for your son or a daughter and you whip this thing out. So you might want to be a little bit more uh, discreet with something like the Wesson Allman. It has that kind of old school, uh, let's see, old school bushcrafting style blade. I forgot the name of it. I'm so sorry. If somebody knows, throw it in the comment section for me. But it's that old school kind of drop point, but with a very blunt tip. My wife freaks out when I do this, but I did it on my review video of this thing too. I kind of just stabbed it in there like, as you see, nothing. And I did it kind of softly because I did get myself in the video. I was going a little bit too crazy with that. But this is, for me, one of the knives that I use a lot because it's safe to be around children. As you saw, if for some reason a child was playing with this, please be very safe with where you leave your knives. That is a huge dad advice I want to give you right now. Um, because luckily I've taught my two-year-old very well. I do have knives all over my desk at all times because it's what I do. Um, and he even comes in here and starts looking at them. But the cool thing is he doesn't play with them. He knows not to touch them. He'll go after my keyboard, though, and go to town in this thing. I have to like, re replace it every other week because he just smashes the buttons. But he won't touch the knives because I've taught him very well. But if that one day he accidentally plays with one of them and say, like, this opens, it's hard for him to cut himself unless he opens it all the way. But then, you know, hopefully I can get to him before that. Another one of my favorites for folding knives is the Fox Core. I know this has been around for a long, long time, but I discovered this uh, just a year ago. One of my favorites. Um, N690 steel is not one of my top choices just because depending on who he treats it and how well the blade geometry, blade width, blade whatever, I love the Kaiser Lin, but on day two, I snapped the tip off of that. Just accidentally hitting, oh, I almost got myself again. Just accidentally hitting a little bit of wood during the testing for that particular blade. And then I got to give a huge shout out to Dylan Mallory because his force is the only Spidey Flicking style opening blade I can do. And like this thing is so sleek, carbon fiber, OEM by Arson Cutlery for him. Boom. Just like that. All right, well, that covers the folding knives knives of the chat. Before we move on to the next section, let me just kind of catch up on you guys here. And the cut. Oh, I think I might have got a micro cut. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Where did I leave off? Boom, 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 boom. Cool, cool. Everybody's been here. Tim. How's it going? You're you're kind of new to the chat. So, hey, John, how's it going? Good to see you here. Cool. All right. I didn't miss anybody else. Well, just talk amongst yourselves while I keep on going with my rambling here. All right. So the next one is the fifth pocket knife. Like I said, I don't always carry. I always carry X, uh, uh, OTF, folding knife, fixed blade. So, uh, sorry, I got distracted. I just was looking at something. Like I said before, if you go into the office or you work in a nursing home or say a school, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> um, some places allow you to carry, you know, little pocket knives. This is not little whatsoever. Some places completely ban it, uh, depending on your state, town, whatever. A knife like this is easier to, one, carry, conceal, whatever you want to call it, and use without scaring the crap out of your coworkers or other citizens in your area. Or kind of like, instead of a folding knife, you can have a slip joint, nail nick, like this Wesson Henry. This one was the Dan Designs Oni original. Knives like this, it's it's a little bit safer to not use. All knives are not going to be safe. It's a knife. But it's safer to deploy without having too much attention brought down on you. Um, and in this day and age, in today's world, I wouldn't say people are sensitive, but 
people are a lot more mindful of what others are doing, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> Like mind your own business, but I know everybody's kind of always like heads on a swivel looking at other folks and seeing what everybody else is doing when you should just mind your own business. But you need to cut an, a you know a little letter open or something at the office. This Wesson microblade, tiny little guy, even smaller than say like the Daijin by Dan Designs. Tiny, tiny thing. You whip that out. Just to cut your letter open or something like that. Nobody's even going to like blink. They're like, oh, okay. He's just opening a letter. It's all good. Your freaking box opener is bigger than that thing. Look. <laughs> all right. And then one of my all time favorites is um, the Civivi Bow. This is probably one of my top five of 2021. It's just very thin profile blade, Nitro V. Marble carbon fiber or shredded carbon fiber, whatever you want to call it, with red and in, red inserts, inlays, detailing, whatever you want to call it. And yes, everybody's gonna say, "Oh, that's not a fifth pocket knife." Like, what are you, you crazy? Again, the jeans I wear all the time are the Vertex, not Vertex, yeah, Vertex Defender jeans, and then their fifth pocket knife, their fifth pocket pocket is that deep. I can actually fit. My ridge wallet in it and look at that so that clip will sit nicely right on top of the fifth pocket because it's that deep so if you have pants that can accommodate a knife like that for your fifth pocket i would definitely definitely kind of say check the cv bow out it's thin profile nothing crazy uh let me give you an example ultra tech if you know it it's even thinner than ultra tech without the clip and this is one of the thinnest uh, mid-size OTFs, I would say. So again, CV bow if you're interested in that. So yeah, those are the kind of the second knife I carry, either the fifth pocket folding knife or a full-size, mid-size folding knife. And then before we go to the next section, let me kind of guess, read the comments. I do need to get a moderator. I really do. <laughs> do, 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 do. Matt Harvey, you should get an OTF. I was straight folding knives until I, I used one. It was the uh, the Benchmade Autocrat? No. Benchmade Phaeton was my first OTF, and that thing changed my life. I hate that I got that because now I love OTFs, and OTFs are not cheap by any means, but there are some that are pretty good. Hey, Jan, how's it going? All right, looks like I didn't miss anybody else. And I don't I, I know you guys kind of talking amongst yourselves. So I don't see any questions for me. Yeah, nice no, fast. It doesn't really matter what knife. Anything can be a fifth pocket knife. <laughs> Again, I said it depends on you know what's size your pockets and stuff like that. All right, so the next one is my favorite, and sometimes not the easiest to carry because depending on the laws and stuff like that. I know there's guys out there that will tell me, don't tell me to do this, don't tell me to do that. I want to carry my own knife. Somebody did say that when I said a, a simple little advice on my video. You don't have to listen to me. I'm just another dude out here with knives talking random stuff. So, But I do want to say, please check. I don't want to uh, see my comments later that you're like, oh, I should have listened to you because I got in trouble. So... I know you're probably sick of seeing these, but of course I carry my Kodiak. But being such a massive knife, it's not always the correct and appropriate choice. Uh, I carry this when we go to the outdoor ranges or the woods, uh, doing stuff in the backyard. If I need to cut a branch or two off of the dying frozen trees here in Michigan, today's 12 degrees. Or the oh so ever beautiful Kerr mode with the maple burl magna cut satin finish it's another choice this one's a little bit smaller and easier to carry you can just put that scout carry just like that this is the Kermode, but with the uh micarta check your ig okay i will <laughs> 
Mrs. Ted is a moderator. She would be, but she is in charge of corralling the toddler and the newborn while I do these and also watching it on her phone. So going back to the conversation, these can be scout carried, vertical waist carried, or I like to call it the, what is the word for it? Kind of like the in the waistband style where this sits right in front. This is your belt buckle pretty much. And then you can just kind of under your shirt, pull that out. If you need it, have pull out. <laughs> Don't get mad at me for that one. You know who I'm talking to. Um, so that's another choice. But again, it's not the smallest knife out there. Um, just kind of a size comparison. Like the M16, in my opinion, is a big knife. Blade, same length. Handle, yes, it's smaller. I there's, a, there's that's another design cue for my fixed blades. Um, and I'll show you a knife. No, and by no means am I trashing the design, discrediting anything like that. It's just for my personal taste. I don't like a massive, massive fixed blade. Another fixed blade I carry, even though I don't like this detail, I still carry it. Is the JW? He's Canadian, but makes stellar. Fixed blades. This is his Meridian 2.5, two and a half inch blade. Huge. My hand is four inches palm to palm, I mean, side to palm, side to palm, and that's the entire, my entire hand. In my opinion, that's. I don't want that handle sticking out when I'm carrying it. Like when I'm carrying it, scout carry or forward in the waistband. Kydex sheath where it ends. See that? You literally have an extra inch of handle either sticking into your stomach or sticking into the small of your back when you're driving your car or sticking in your hip when you have it kind of hip carry. That's the reason I designed these handles on every single knife model, even my Kerr mode. Look at that. It's the same exact length handle and this is a massive two inch wide five inch blade you don't really need this i i know a lot of guys old school guys want to have a full purchase on their knives because they know it's not going anywhere however if you have enough milling and texturing and jimping your knife ain't going anywhere if someone was going to try and rip this out of my hand it would really cut my hand open because these grooves will not give while you have a huge handle like this, you have the palm swell, that will help, but it's so smooth, it will come right out of your hand. Like I was afraid of even doing that because I, I thought it was gonna fly out instead of slip out. So that's kind of the design cues behind my knives. And then of course my favorite, and I think this is my go-to EDC one, and that's how I designed the knife in the first place, is the Grizzler. It's the smallest handle that we have and the smallest blade. 3.25 inch blade is all you need. 3.25 inch blade is literally every folding knife out there that's not a mini version, actually. Even the CV, not CV, the Western All Man, it's three. So tiny, right? But that's what an everyday carry knife is for. You're not going to be cutting. And fighting off ninjas coming out of the shadows on you with like something like this. But this is for opening your letters, cutting boxes, cutting zip ties off of toys. Um, if you need to, self-defense purposes, purposes, of course. That's the reason this is a versatile blade. This can be used for tactical use as well. That's why we designed it kind of with the milled here. Palm um, so here, handles, dual. I'm trying to go quickly through these because I don't want to ramble on too much. You guys have heard so much about this and everything that I fear, but just kind of going through each one. But I do love this the most, not just because it's my own design, just because the reason I got into my own knife designing is because I wanted something that I want to carry and that I dreamt up in my mind. This is my this is my perfect EDC knife, so I made my perfect EDC knife. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to do it yourself. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Again, short handle, 
Uh, well, that's a poor representation because of how the kind of sheath is. There you go. Monger blade. So those are the fixed blades I carry, and the reasons I carry the fixed blade is that's about 0.7 inches thick. If you need an emergency situation, use this as a pry bar. You can, even though it's a tanto. It goes pretty far up. You got about there is when it kind of narrows down and gets a little bit weaker in the integrity of the steel. But it's heat treated very well to where that still will hold up. But this I designed where you can shove it into a car door and pry it open if you need to. Um, being that dad mentality, God forbid something happens one day with the snow and ice and stuff like that. And the doors are trapped and I'm trying to get my newborn or toddler out of their car seats. I can whip this out, shove it in there, and just pry open that door or just climb back there and cover it, like whatever situation. But the reason I'm saying that is you can use this for some extreme stuff. Um, I don't have a door with a broken frame for to me to show you guys, but uh, hopefully nobody that purchases one or myself will ever, ever need it to use it for that purpose, but you can. That's the reason I made it. All right, so that's fixed blades for you. Let me go to the comment section. Just double check everybody. Make sure nobody's fighting or, you know, having a, too much of a good time without me. <clears throat> okay. I fight ninjas all the time. Christine, I know you do because Peter keeps sending them to you to steal your knives, but I know you're a good ninja fighter. <laughs> I'm not trying to fight ninjas, <laughs> but you can. But you can, but you don't need to. So, um, I'm a decent sized dude. I'm pretty strong. But if you know me and anybody knows me, I try to stay away from confrontation or anything that requires physical. Not because I can't do it, not because I don't want to do it. There's no need for it. It's that's a problem with this world is everybody resorts right away to aggression. Um, my wife is going to laugh at me for saying this because <laughs> she, she thinks I kind of a temper sometimes, but it's not quite a temper. Uh, it, I don't even know how to explain it, but if you know me as a friend and stuff like that, I'm very easy going and stuff like that. Carrying items like this and this to an everyday person will ask you, what are you getting ready for war or something? No. It's like any, any preparation or the tactical mindset, you've got to be ready for anything. If you need it, it's there for you, but you don't really ever have to use it. I carry a firearm as well, and they teach you in the classes. That's your last resort. These are also my last resort because if I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this. It's not going to be a deterrent. It's going to be a final end thing. All right. Sorry for the rant. <laughs> Let me see who else is kind of chatting here. Oh, Christine said press three dots. Okay. There you go, Christine. The wife just texted me and said to click the three dots and then add you. I'm so sorry. Phone's in my pocket. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Did it add you? I just clicked the three dots. <laughs> Let me do it one more time just in case. Oh, yep. It added you. Sweet. I have a moderator. Heck yes. All right, so let's get into more fun stuff. We talked about the dangerous, sharp, pokey objects that people are scared of, except for us crazy knife nuts out here. Pocket trash or pocket toys or fidget toys or EDC is more of the fun aspect of your everyday carry. With the items I have, they all kind of multi-purpose and multi-functional. Just to kind of get the envious, jealous folks out there kind of mad at me. Dan Designs, Babushka. So Adrian makes some really cool stuff that others have not even really thought of. So what this is, is a kind of a cigar holder, um, if need be, in situations. Or pop over the bottom, it's a little stash compartment for, you know, cash or flour. <laughs> And then once you kind of put it back together, it's a little Russian ceramic 
doll with the cool art done by uh, Grayscale EDC. A kind of similar item is the Dan Designs Tombstone. And, and yes, I'm so sorry, this whole section, the EDC Fidget Pocket Trash section is going to be all Dan Designs. And if you guys know, I do work for him. However, it's not because of that. It's literally the only ones on the market that I will actually use. Everything else is kind of... So similar thing, you pop the plate open. Uh, you got a bottle opener and another cigar holder, you know? So tombstone and you also have the sweet anchor you know it's, it's good to kind of use this you can hold your grocery bags or your heavy keys or in situations you can use it to hold cigars again <laughs> it's a uh, kind of a anchor shape keychain it's called the kraken uh kraken not because of uh, the anchor and squid it's kraken for other reasons <laughs> Thank you for the link, Christine. And then this is coming out soon. It's probably the only, I take that back, it's one of one of two fidget toys I own and will only own because everything else I feel like is a kid's toy. It's called the Oasis Light. Coming soon to Dan Designs. What this is is two titanium plates with about 12 magnets on it. Clips like so. And it's just kind of a cool sliding um, fidget toy and then it's in the shape of a kind of a stone so it's kind of like a worry stone if you don't know what a worry stone is it's it's kind of a, a a mental cue when you're stressed out or have a situation where your aggression or your temper is getting too high or just something that you need your mind to kind of disconnect for a, a, a minute a worry stone is you kind of put in your hand and you you, you feel like the smooth textures it's kind of a a, a, a soothing feeling I don't know how to really explain it. So that's what kind of worry stones are made for. Like, you know, a lot of cultures in the East use it as kind of like a meditation thing. You kind of just feel it. It's like a, a little stone. But in this case, it's a slab of metal that was just kind of rounded, polished, and finished to where it's smooth. You do have the, the texture back here, so you can kind of grab it to do that. And then right now, we still have these on the site are called the drops. So it looks like a teardrop, water drop. This is a spinner, a clicker. Oh, sorry. You can hear that. Every rotation, it does click. And then on the back, again, it has a kind of similar concept of a slider. And then again, the shape of a worry stone. So this is kind of like three in one. This is a two in one. And then we have a four or five in one, excuse me, coming out as well. And then this can be used as a keychain. And then for the ladies, if you need kind of a, another item in your mind, in your purse, for a deterrent, for any, you know, rough situation, the drops are pretty cool, too. Um, if you know what a monkey's fist is, is where a paracord is wrapped around, and say, a ball bearing that's about a couple ounces or so. This is similar to that concept. You thread paracord or whatever through it, knot it, make sure it's secure. And if you ever need to on your keychain, like just kind of put on your keychain, you can use this to swing around just like a monkey's fist um, to deter or offensive. <laughs> I would not be on the, I don't want to be on the receiving end of this thing. It's it's a solid piece of titanium. Like this thing's heavy. All right, so that's kind of pocket trash EDC section of my EDC carry. So, so far we have the OTF folding knife or fifth pocket knife, fixed blade, and kind of a multifunctional pocket tool, toy thingy. Okay, again, we're just going to take a second here just so I can kind of see if anybody else has joined. Hey, Jack's Lungs EDC, see? Somebody else just joined. Nick Montero, uh, Uncle Cow is here. Paul, what's up? Thank you, Christina, for helping me out. I appreciate it big time. What's Peter doing? Stuck in the snow? Oh, I, never mind. I know what he's doing. He's getting his stuff ready for uh, for class. Your Nick, your office put up. Okay, so a funny question. So Nick's office put up a sign that says "No knives" and stuff like that. I used to work in a car dealership here up in Detroit. 
Um, it's when I first moved here from Florida. Florida is kind of a funny state where they don't really care what you do as long as you're not doing it to, you know, anybody else. Like if you're just minding your own business, doing your thing, you're fine. So of course me having an OTF, I will be sitting at my desk far away from people. Like nobody's even near me. Like when I'm just taking a breather from the craziness of car sales, I'll just be doing. But like, would you know that's that's a knife if you didn't know it's a knife? Like, so if I sat here and you were a knife person, you would not know that's a knife going off, right? A couple days later, I get pulled to the office and the owner is there. I'm just like, oh God, now what, what did I do? Did I crash a car without knowing or something? He's like, I know you love knives. I know you care all the time. We've, I've asked you to use your knife, but you can't be doing that in the showroom. And I was like, okay, that fair. That's fair. That's fair enough. But I'm like, who? Who would even like rat me out? And he was like, oh, it's a, a customer that was sitting in the um, the maintenance lounge. I was like, that's on the other side of the dealership. How did he hear this? I was like, okay, whatever. So, but yeah, just to kind of play off of what Nick said about his job and putting a sign up with no knives that that, that cracks me up you got to open stuff like I had to unbox brochures and car parts and stuff what am I going to open with my freaking pen <laughs> which you can you can do a lot with pens you can open stuff you can use it for a puncturing tool anything you want this is a uh, Parker Jotter pen full aluminum it uses kind of like the kind of Fisher style space ink where so you can use this like writing upside down sideways whatever you want it's waterproof pressurized um very inexpensive edc pens can get up to like 100 200 300 400 depending on who you want it from or you can go crazy with a mont blanc did i just exit out of my own thing nope there i am i clicked some of this keyboard and i thought i just closed out but yes a jotter a parker jotter pen these things run about 20 bucks to 30 bucks depending on the size it's a full aluminum casing and you can use this as a blunt object, or in this case, it's pretty pointed for pressure points when you're, you know, doing stuff. Okay, so that brings into the pry bar section of our conversation. Kind of sticking with Dan Designs first, just because it's it's two of my five that I have, is the Talon. Um, this one, you can put keys on again, and it's actually really good because you can hang this on your pocket, and it's easy to kind of pull your keys out, like my jeans. I can fit like that much of my arm in there, my jean pockets. I don't know why they designed that for the jeans, but I guess because of these pants are made for EDC and firearms. Keychain here, bot opener there, pry bar here, multifunctional tools. If you guys haven't realized so far, everything that I carry is multifunctional. Even my own knives are multifunctional, OTFs are multifunctional. Fixed blades, not so much. Multifunctional, but it's a blade. It's it's what you got. Again, cigar holder, if need be. This one will do a, a lot more damage than the other ones I showed you. Pry bar. A lot of folks say you don't need to carry a pry bar. And 85% of the time, I do agree with you. Because, say, I'm not going to show you the whole one because this is one of my favorite ones. Say this pry bar. That's all it is, really. Is the pry bar how many times you gonna use a pry bar in your life on a day-to-day -day basis not much unless you're you know opening paint cans as a painter or you're continuously prying open i don't know wooden boxes if you're unpacking shipments and stuff like that which not many people ship with wooden boxes anymore but if you do it cool um that's why mine are multifunctional. yes it'd be cool to have a pry bar you know so you don't have to use your knife to pry open a door or something like that but it's also a bottle opener it's also a cigar holder um, paperweight. So going with the multifunctional, another Dan Designs, the Sidekick. This is the original. Um, new ones are coming out soon with upgrades, but we'll worry about that later. This is not a commercial. I'm just going through my stuff. As you see, pry bar level. Tritium insert, so at night you can see this. It glows a little bit. And then the back, you can put a bit in here to do, use as a screwdriver if need be. And then it has centimeters and inches ruler. So again, this is a multifunctional tool. It's not just a pry bar. Gerber. Gerber's hit and miss. Um, their QC is horrible these days. 
even the military knives like the 06 autos qc sucks which is horrible because when you're saying our you know brothers and sisters overseas are using it on a day-to-day basis to save their lives and it's not up to par but the gerber pry x is another good multi-functional pry bar i see the pry bar there bottle opener here larger flathead smaller flathead and a tool here for say an oxygen tank and then you have your exacto knife which is perfect i use this to cut boxes open when we're unboxing shipments and stuff like that if you don't want something so small you think an exo you know exacto knife is too small and too flimsy and too weak we'll bump up to their oh there's tape see from opening boxes their utility it's the same concept so you have your utility knife seat belt cord rope cutter pry bar here again smaller screwdriver bigger screwdriver and bottle opener another multi-functional pry bar last one there's only two functions on it but it's one of my personal favorites and it's a cool reason it is um i was talking to peter with of therapeutic edge last night and he has knives that he will never ever get rid of because they have sentimental values and there's a reason behind them like it was a gift or it marked a specific date or signifies something this one was given to me by baldman edc baldman knife and tools at my first blade show in june um he is out of cape coral fort myers florida area which i am from so it was kind of like we were both originally floridians I'm now up in Michigan, so I'm technically a Michigander. I had to switch my license and everything. <laughs> um, but this, he gave it to me just because I told him I wasn't in the pry bars. I haven't found one I really liked. He's like, well, you drink beer, right? I'm like, yep. Yeah. Like, he's like, well, here, this is not a pry bar. It's a bottle opener. This happens to have Mexican blanket my Carta or G Carter, whatever you want to call it. And I was like, oh, sweet. And I've tried to keep in touch with him, but I've been so busy. I, I kind of suck at keeping in touch with people right now. But yes, it's a pry bar and it's a bottle opener. And this one's made out of 01 tool steel. Very strong. It's not going to break. By the way, everything that I have gone through is linked in the description of this live stream. I don't know if you guys can see it right now, but it's in there. So if you guys are curious about any of these items, I know Christine is going to link everything. However, they'll also be in the description for you as well. So those are the, the pry bars that I rotate through. And then before we go to the next section, let me just kind of see who else is here. Cracking skulls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, JB. She has the power now. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Nick, I, I think it is G. Carter. I didn't look it up, and he doesn't have it on his site anymore. This is one of the older models he had that came out in June. I believe that is G. Carter. In the Mexican blanket. Let me feel it. Yeah, that feels like G Carta. It doesn't feel like just my Carta. For sure. Cool. All right. And then multi tools. So when I say multi tools, I carry multi tools on me at all times, no matter just like the OTF. If I only have two things on me, it's a OTF and a small uh, multi tool. My favorite is the Leatherman Micra. It's it's not a newer one in the market, but it's it's been around for a while. This one is not a pry, I mean, not pliers. It's scissors. Because in a day to day situation, are you going to use scissors more or pry? I mean, not pliers. Scissors, of course. And this one has your usual, of course, um, bottle opener, an awl tweezers, little screwdriver, file thingy. Um, I call it the under nail picker, another file, another flathead, a smaller blade, multifunctional. And then I try to always carry scissors because going back to the statement about whipping out, say, this knife when you're at work, is ridiculous so if you need to cut something like a piece of paper a piece of string scissors 
Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry. Cold Steel Knives. I love Cold Steel Knives, but that was back in the day. Um, I had a, which I'm going to call it, the Recon Ones, the Tontos. Those were my go to heavy duty knives because, again, I love Tontos, even for fixed plates, folders, OTFs, you name it. That was a tank because that had the triad lock, of course. And then back then was, I forgot the seal used back then, but now it's S35VN, which I'm okay with, but I prefer what they used before. I think it was the use CTX before, HPS CTX, but I'm not sure. Um, that was a while ago. That was like 2009, 2010. So the next tool that I rotate through is called the Boker Atlas. Only two tools on this. <clears throat> Slip joint knife. And if I can get this out without cutting myself. A full size pair of scissors. Well, not full size, but full size for a multi-tool because as you can see, that's a little tiny one. And it's a little bit bigger. Only two on that one. However, still two very... Utilizable tools. Like if I had nothing else on me and my two, two main tools that I want to carry with me all the time is a knife and scissors. There you go. The Boker Atlas. And then going back to always having scissors on you. The other one I go through a lot as well. This is probably the second most carried one that I have is the Gerber armbar. So you have the actual full size screwdriver with the full size bit holder. It doesn't lock though, which kind of irritates me because sometimes when you use it, like, wish it was locking. Should make my own multi tool. Scissors again. And a knife. This one's cool too. I don't cut myself here. There's a little pummel here. Uh, hammer, they call it. I've actually tried hammering nails for pictures in, and it doesn't quite work that well. Cool thing is, it opens up. Oop. Bottle opener. So again, multifunctional, small multi-tool. Last but not least, everybody's favorite since childhood and Boy Scouts, Swiss Army Knives. This one's a tinker, which is kind of out of the norm because it doesn't have a pair of scissors but it still has kind of that full size Phillips head. And if you don't know the Tinker, you, uh, let me just open everything real quick just so I can just show you what it has on here. But Swiss Army has a lot of different variations of their Swiss Army knives. The one that I would carry on a day-to-day -day basis over this one is the Hunter, Huntsman, just because it does have the wood saw and scissors. But the reason behind this is it's a very sleek, small package. All right. Well, that's that section. So, so far we have OTF. Fixed blade is what I carry. Folding knife or fifth pocket knife. Pocket trash or pocket toy or fidget toy or whatever you want to call it. Multi-tool tool. Pry bar. Multi-tool. All right, before the next section, let's just double check here. Nobody else has called me names or anything in the here, and I'm not aware of it. Uh, yep, 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 cool. Yep, Tim, Armbar is probably one of my favorites. I was very, very iffy, because you know how some companies like to make stuff like gimmicky, not trashing, not saying anybody's bad, um, but like... Sog made the pop it little pry bar tool. So, like, you know, you put the little pop it on the back of your phone and you can put your fingers in there and you won't fly your hand. And it has a little section where you slide it out. It's actually a multi tool. It's cool, but at the same time, it's kind of a gimmick. I, I saw it at Best Buy and I was like, wow, even Best Buy carries this, like an easy tool. Um, and I was like, playing with it at Best Buy, I'm like, I, I wouldn't use that. Like, <clears throat> they're trying to shove like everything on here into something the size of this. Not take the, the, the G card out, but the size of the metal plate there, and then put it into a phone accessory. It's cool, but at the same time, 
I want to use it. <laughs> All right. So next section, kind of more of the miscellaneous. It's it's not stuff that I carry on a day to day basis, but it's stuff that has been in my rotation probably more than half of the year. One is the Dango Products Capsule XO. So I use this as a pill case. It's watertight, 100 meter depth, water uh, water resistance, waterproofing. Locks in pretty well. It's made out of machined aluminum, T66 aircraft, aircraft aluminum. And uh, anodization on this is incredible because I literally carried this for six months straight. I still have all my wisdom teeth in. Never had a cavity in my life. My sister-in-law is a dental hygienist, and they were shocked to find that out that I've never been to the dentist for six years. No cavities. However, the wisdom teeth have started to develop cavities. This was six months ago. Oh, no, this is eight months ago. And then six months is when I had to start carrying this because I started having pain and issues with all this, and it was just shooting pain through my jaw and my ear. So I started to carry ibuprofen with me. Like, you know, if I ate something too cold or ate something too hot or ate something too chewy or hard, like beef jerky or like a, a Jolly Rancher, it will start to hurt. And this was like a godsend because this fits very sleekly in your pocket. Uh, actual OTF. See that? Pretty sleek, pretty small. Slides in your pocket. Holds about... I like to say about 35 to 40 ibuprofen in there. So that's something small that I carry. I used to carry all the time, but now I don't have the pain anymore, so I kind of stopped doing it. I don't like to put stuff in my body that I don't have to. That's Don't be dirty with that joke. Um, so if I don't need medicine, I don't take it. Like if I have a cough, I won't take cough syrup or anything until it gets too bad. Um Christine, I'm trying to get the wisdom teeth out, but even with dental insurance, it's a lot, and I'm trying to get my knives out. <laughs> Priorities. I'll deal with the pain. Let me get these out first. Um, flashlight, I, I – okay, this was an argument I had with a couple of my friends. Do you really have to carry a flashlight all the time? You know, it's, it's daytime, right? But the answer to that is sometimes you do. Working at a car dealership, even though you have all the spotlights in um, – your delivery bay or the maintenance bay and people are looking at things. So say like somebody brings a car and there's something wrong with the lights on, something's wrong with the engine or, and it's one of your customers that bought seven cars from you. And you're just like, what the heck's going on? This is a brand new car. Or if you're delivering a car to a customer, they're giddy about their new car. They want to see everything in their car, but it's raining out. It's dark. And even though the delivery bay has spotlights. So this is two modes, low and bright. This came in handy because I could show people stuff. Instead of whipping out your phone, your phone has a, 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 a flashlight on it, but it's not that bright. This is like 300 lumens. Your flashlight is probably 100, 150, not kind of the flash. The flash is very bright. But the actual flashlight itself, this, again, is very small, uh, very compact. Try and hold that like that. And, again, my Ridge Wallet. Palm is four inches. Oops, wrong tool. So it's about four inches, maybe even smaller. It's it does not take much of your pocket space up. It's the same size as a Civivi bow. So this actually fits combination right in my fifth pocket of my jeans. Oh, speaking of that, where the heck did it? If you need an organizer for your pocket, uh, the Van Quest. Um, quiver is an awesome tool. I used to use this a lot. I don't do it anymore because of the addition of my multiple pockets. I used to just wear normal jeans, but before, so let's see here. Let me show you. So you can put your flashlight, your pen, your multi tool, and your pry bar for tools and then there's still like a cash or stash pocket back here um you know if you want to put say your oasis light fidget toy so now you have five tools in a very sleek slender profile you can slide this right in your jean pocket 
pry bar, multi-tool, pen, flashlight, EDC toy, tool, whatever. Oh, JB, it's it snowed outside too. Um, a couple days ago, we have probably about two inches of snow. My the street in front of my driveway is an ice ring. I almost hit a car today coming home from groceries. I literally stopped probably about 15, 20 feet away to turn into my driveway, and then somebody was an idiot and parked right in front of my driveway when you're supposed to park on the other side of the road. And I, so I hit the brakes to turn. I just kept going like this, and I was even like, oh, crap. I thought it was going to happen, but we did the whole Tokyo Drift thing, you know? We went right around it. Perfect. Save the kids and the wife. <laughs> But I have a huge Silverado, so I would have been fine. We would have been fine, but the car in front of us would have been the. <laughs> you know, speaking of tools, you should carry with you at all times. Um, I don't carry this at all times, but I carry it sometimes when we're going on vacation or somewhere that, um, if something happens to the knife I'm using with heavy use, I need something to repair it with. It's the Kershaw TX tool. So it's a, a tiny little. Again, the Ridge Wallet. Kind of a screwdriver. Oop. Screws open. And has five bits on the inside that you can use. So you have your, you know, your torque screws, flathead, Phillips, all the stuff you need to do to maintain your knife or knives, that is. So say we were camping. And I was using the American Blade Works, you know, Model 1 V6, and then something happened to the pivot where it was loose and it was blade play. I can take this out, choose the right bit, and then boom, 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 back in business. Or, you know, your screw is loose, tighten it up a little bit. You're using it to baton something. Yes, I've seen people use fixed blades to baton, you know. If you know outdoors use, you can use anything to baton. The Rat 1s and Rat 2s are great knives to baton with. Um, because they're inexpensive and if it breaks, it breaks. But for those that, if they can just afford that knife, it's still a good knife too. It's a very sturdy um, OS 8. It might be 8 CR now though. So, yes. To kind of organize your keys, yes, I know I have like things strategically placed around me. I utilize all the space on me. <laughs> Our K bar. These are the juniors. They have the full size ones too. So these are kind of your 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 key consolidators. You can get different size screws to accommodate different amount of keys. So this just keeps your keys from clanking and cluttering on your key ring. So as you see, I have three keys. I'm sorry, three keys on top, two keys on bottom, five keys in total. And when folded in. Nice, discreet, small packet. They have, and then they have cool designs. This is kind of, you know, the World War II Noah's Art Shark. This is actually OD Green Micarta with the Mythosaur. Yep, it's just backwards. So the Mythosaur from Mandalorian. And then this is the way. Of course, this is the way. You know, Galactic Fathers. <laughs> but yes, so these are really cool too. You just hooks on your key ring. Keeps your keys from clanking around when you're trying to sneak through the house at night and get to your car because you forgot your wallet and then your two children are sleeping and you can't wake them up. So, you know, these will keep it nice and compact for you. Really cool to have. Not necessary, of course. Like, normally, I only need one key, my house key to get in and out, and then car keys. That's it. But, like, this has my garage key, storage key, um, safe key, gun locks, stuff like that. And I think that's everything. <laughs> I laid out so much stuff that so so yeah. So just to recap, I always carry an OTF, a folding knife, a fixed blade, pocket tool, toy, fidget thing, just to kind of keep my mind off things if I need to, like the the drop here, the fidget toy, <clears throat> pry bar, multi tool, multi functional pry bar, multi tool, and then just kind of. A hodgepodge of the miscellaneous things that I have, but probably one of my favorite things again is the Vanquist quiver, as you see, it keeps everything together, it slides around your pocket so that things are not just flying around. And it's very you can remember where everything is. You just slide your hand in the pocket. I need the multi tool, I need the pry bar, I need the pen and the flashlight, I need my fidget toy. 
So, yeah. Gas service representative. Sick day today. Oh. <laughs> wow. You're out. What temperature is it out there, uh, Napster Ninja? But, yeah, so that's kind of like what I carry in my day-to-day -day basis. And you guys can use this to kind of help pinpoint down what you want to carry. Um, I just showed you a couple examples of each, but like everybody that is in the knife community knows you, you literally have a hundred OTFs, 500 folders, uh, you know, 50 fixed blades that you have and you kind of rotate through. But the ones I show you are kind of the ones that I utilize on a day-to-day -day basis in my 365 plan of EDC. I do mix and match if, you know, we get new things in. Savivi is always pumping knives out. Benchmade has a huge lineup coming out this year. I'm coming out with my own stuff, so people will be adding that stuff into their rotations. Everybody's always coming out and innovating and just kind of sprucing the market because this is one of the most vast markets I've ever seen of any product line. I used to work in the cigar industry, and I thought cigars were crazy because, you know, how many different cigars can you really make? But there was thousands upon thousands, not, if not 100,000 different types of cigars and cigar companies on the planet. You know, in the United States market, it's not that crazy because with tobacco, um, the ATF is still kind of controlling a little bit because, you know, there's just like knife rights, there's tobacco knives. I mean, tobacco rights in America, it's it's kind of the same thing. I'm not saying smoking is a good thing. Cigar, to me, was a relaxation thing. You don't inhale cigar smoke, and if you do, um, you're either the Hulk or crazy because you can get absolutely sick off of one cigar by inhaling the whole thing. But you kind of just hold the smoke in your mouth, taste the smoke. It's kind of like more of a, a, a like a, a palate kind of thing, just like wine. People drink wine to get drunk, but not really. It, it was made to enjoy, made to kind of taste different taste notes. Like, you know, a, a Cabernet would be kind of dry, but you can kind of get kind of like little cherry notes to it and stuff like that. Like, that's what cigars are, too. You can smoke it and kind of get like, you know, you get a little bit of toffee or chocolate or oak or... When they told me that it tastes like oak or mahogany, I'm like, did you go and like lick like wood or something to, to learn what that tastes like? But whatever. <clears throat> Star Wars themes fixed blades. Well, there is the black saber, you know, that looks like a tanto. So all we got to do is uh, take the Kodiak here and just make it about yay long. Cerakota completely black, and you have your dark saber. <laughs> yes, Jay, and I did say a hundred OTFs and fifty, I mean five hundred folders, because you know there's people out there like that. You you, you know that for a fact. So don't don't think that's don't, don't say that comes as a surprise to you. But for sure, for sure, somebody out there is gonna have a hundred OTFs. I think I saw a guy on the Microtech. Um, Facebook group kind of posts like a family photo and he had all his plastic totes out, storage totes, and I swear I saw probably 200 Microtech boxes just smashed into all, not smashed, but organized very nicely into all these plastic totes and I was like, that dude is my spirit dude because I want that many OTFs. I love OTFs. OTFs for days. I'm clanking this and my son's napping. Up. Luckily, I'm in my my a little secret room here, so it should be fine. <laughs> so, yeah, guys. Well, let's do kind of a quick pocket dump because I want to see what you guys are carrying on your day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, go ahead and just pop it down there in the comment section real quick, and let's see what you guys carry on you. Today, when I was out grocery shopping, I had, of course, the Axial Shift, my Ridge Wallet, the Micra, The little oasis, of course. And then we had the Wesson All Man is what I was carrying today. So let me see real quick what you guys are carrying. Um, if you guys are carrying anything. If not, it's not a big deal. Just kind of curious what the other uh, tactical everyday parents out there are carrying. Stormtrooper. Everybody's obsessed with the Stormtrooper look. Um, Adrian did the Stormtrooper and Vader look for um, Blade West this year for the Basilisk, the Yokai, the Banshee, and the 
Oh. He didn't get so mad at me that I forgot the fourth one. But yes, there, there's so much to keep a track of. Banshee. When to go. There we go. So he did Vader and Stormtrooper variants of each. And those were insanely sought after. To this day, we've been sold out. And he will never make those variants again. So side note, when a maker, designer, OEM says they're never going to make something ever again, they're never going to make something ever again. So you should probably buy it up before they forget. They, they run out, you know, before, before they never come back again. Hint, 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 hint. 15 of each only. We never made again. <laughs> Sorry. I had to plug my own products on my own channel. So, yeah, the Dem Design Stormtrooper. Like, I, like this one, the Bastos, you have the Stormtrooper. I have the Vader. Blacked out, blacked out. I, I'm not a huge fan of the white G10 just because I would prefer the JG10. If I wanted to keep it Jade, cool, because it doesn't get dirty too easily. White G10 gets very, very dirty very easily. We had some, uh, what you call it, display models at Blade West with the Stormtroopers. And even after a couple people, not like the whole day, like after like two or three people handle it, you can already see like dirt from people's hands and grease on the, the yellow. Um, <clears throat> sorry, white. Wow. One second. On the white G10. So. <clears throat> All right, so let's see what, what people are carrying here. Uh, let me make sure I got it all the way up here. Let's see. <laughs> Big Red always has the angry watermelons. And so does Christine today. And, of course, CV, uh, CVV XARC. Great knife. Front flipper. My sister-in-law got me one last Christmas. It's the one with the Damascus. And the carbon fiber, great, great choice. Dan's carrying just a Walner Pride day off, cleaned the front gutter out, and went and filled up almost nap time. Nap time is good. Uh, the shaman and the baby banter. So, do you carry the baby banter as like your your first use knife, or do you always use the the, the shaman? Or do you kind of just put that in your fifth pocket? I'm, I'm kind of curious myself on how you utilize that after I explain how to utilize my stuff. <clears throat> the SRN Land 910 and the Sin Cut. How do you enjoy the Sin Cut, Matt? I haven't touched any of that stuff yet. I, you know, I've had the Civivis and stuff like that, but I haven't got a chance to use or even held a Sin Cut yet. O light knives. I need to get on the O light knives too. I got a lot of knives I need to I need to get on, but you know, like Savivi comes out with too many, and I and I and I keep receiving them, so I got to keep cranking them. <laughs> o light warrior. I need to see, see. There's so many knives, and I still need to. Look. There's too many knives out there. Way too many. I gotta be a little quiet. <laughs> Stuck at home, so not too much to do. Just a classic. And yes, my fidget cube. I love fidget cubes. Do I have one too? I do. I do. See, I have stuff everywhere. And look at this. It's a stormtrooper fidget cube. We got the little ball bearing, clicker, little controller, little spinner, blaster gun there, and then little sliders, <laughs> and then the stormtrooper head, of course. Oh, I forgot the button. <clears throat> Fifth pocket for the baby banter. Absolutely. I was actually gonna bring that out. I just couldn't find my fifth my baby banter for the fifth pocket section because I've used it a few times. I might have lost it, but that's actually a good knife too. I did a review on it and it slices through everything pretty well. Bear Tonto. Hell yeah. CRGB copper rampart. Excellent, Joseph. Sink of straw. I like a few more than Savis. Wow. What's the steel on it? Is it are they using 8CR or are they trying to upgrade it still? Oh, Christine, sweet. Thank you. That'd be awesome if I can get a couple sync cuts. Yeah, I, I don't have any experience with them. I know Amazon has them. Um, a lot of retailers are starting to carry them as well. So, yeah, I do need to get a few sync cuts for sure. Um, knives I got coming up actually for review are. Some more fixed blades. Last year, I barely touched fixed blades until I made my own. So since I had my own, I wanted to get some 
to compare. So I'm also going to compare and show you guys too how they cut, how they function, um, the looks, the feel. And then, of course, I always compare it to mine for you so you guys can get a, uh, an idea. <clears throat> I think I've been talking too long because my throat's... I need to drink water. Jay, Ed, where do you... Wait, are those all under caring today? <laughs> Do you have Vertex jeans as well or 511? Because <laughs> I don't even. What is that? One. So you have a Native Chief, a PM2, Kapara, Sandstone 940. You got a Griptilian. You got a Micra. You got a Wave. You got a Moranive. Wait, you got eight knives on you right now, Jan? <laughs> Oh, it's 9CR. Okay. So, yeah, actually, I do like 9CR because it's a steel that I can just utilize and not have to worry about, you know, like 8CR. This is 8CR. It used to be OS 8 back in the day, which I preferred because it was, for some reason to me, it, it just felt a little bit stronger, a little better edge retention. But the 8CR is good, too. Um, I, I don't knock budget steels. I actually sometimes prefer budget steels. Back before I got into like Benchmade as my entry entry high level knife, my gateway knife, I only would carry these kind of knives because I didn't believe you have. It's a knife. It's a tool. I didn't believe you had to spend more than fifty bucks on them. These were thirty six dollars back in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. These are now like fifty, sixty bucks. Well, that has to have to do with um, the passing of Mr. Kate Carson, but but dang, inflation <laughs> double the price. 10 years later, 10, 11 years later. No, 12 now, 2022. Keep forgetting. Right. Is he carrying a knife roll? Like, is Jane carrying a knife roll? Like, the cool knife roll is a uh, art company um, Frontier. It's pretty cool. Actually, I might have one. Hold on. One second. I do. So, have you ever. My cushion. <laughs> So if you're like Jan and want to carry eight knives on you, <clears throat> nice classic knife roll. This one's in dark camo. Seven slots, two large end ones, and five skinnier ones. Let me load it up for you, and I'll show you. It's pretty discreet once you get everything loaded in. Still, so. Uh, if you want one of our company's pocket quills or frontier roll, knife rolls or tool rolls, it's on Etsy. Um, he only has a site on Etsy. He doesn't has his own like standalone site yet. Just trying to get the right size knives in here for you guys to show you. That might not fit. Uh, let's see this one. All right. So so see. Seven knives. Roll it up for you. Your standard 16 ounce water bottle. And you got seven knives. It's not tightly rolled. Roll it up for it. There we go. 16 ounce standard water bottle, seven knives. Put that in your back pocket. <laughs> All right, JB, thank you for stopping in. And actually, that probably concludes today's live and first video of 2022. Thank you guys for joining today. I really appreciate you guys always kind of giving the channel support. I appreciate everybody. Thank you, Christine, for being my moderator for the day. And I hope you guys have a happy Monday and the rest of your week. It's still a long way to go. We still got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday before the awesome, awesome weekend. Sorry for the ones that have to work on Saturdays and Sundays. I just found out DHL delivers on Sundays. Super odd to me. But, yes, thank you guys again. And before I part... 
the Kodiak, Kerr Mode, and Grizzlers are still up on the website, www.tacticaleverydaydad.com for pre-order. And stay tuned on my Instagram page to see we will have the first sprint run of the Grizzlers coming out um, either this week, hoping because of still mail is still being dumb, or early next week we'll be dropping only 10 first edition, first batch S45VN with the dark asset edge like this, red and black G10, red liners, and the Typhoon Cry or Crypt Tech Kydex sheath, just like, like that, but in a gray and black for this guy. And those will be 280 and they will come with hard cases like so and special edition stickers and you'll also get a pack of stickers inside um normal knives will only get one sticker these will come with six so you are you're a part of my special club for going with the sprint run knives again let me just show you this it's hard, hard heavy duty american made pelican light case Thank you guys again for joining today, and we'll see you in the next one.